Hey, Facebook, it's Monica, your coach and partner in flow. I am excited to be going live in about 60 seconds. And um, the topic we're going to be talking about, I'm super, super excited about because um, I was talking to someone today who's a part of a member of, of the flow tribe. And um, I think it's just a really, really important topic to discuss. So I'm going to give us like 60 seconds and start promptly at 815. So hopefully we get some people on. I decided to do this kind of like, I don't know, a couple of hours ago. So if you're watching uh, live, you know, give me a wave. And if you're watching the replay of this, then give me a thumbs up emoji. So if you're watching it live right now, wave to me, give me a wave emoji. And if you're watching the replay, give me a thumbs up. Either way, if you don't see it now, it'll be here. And when it's uh, time for you to see it, you'll have access to it. So yeah. All right, so it's 8.15, so let's get started. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Monica Spate. I'm a certified coach. Um, I am a passionate, passionate follower of Christ. Uh, but most importantly, I love to see people um, really live in their divine purpose and um, really maximize the life that God has given them by discovering and embracing their own freedom to flow in their divine purpose. Hey, Michelle, how are you, dear? Glad you could join. And so tonight, I really, really want to talk about um, kind of this, this passion of mine for the next 90 days. I'm committing um, to really helping those who are connected with me that I feel like I'm called to, who are part of the Flow Tribe. Um, and Flo the Flow Tribe, just so you know, is an email community that I have. And you can subscribe to that by going to monicaspate.com. And all you do is give your email address and your name, and you are part of our community. And so I'm really excited about um, the tribe. It's growing. And I really want to commit to helping people in this last quarter of the year, the last 90 days of the year, really moving in the freedom that God has given them to flow in their divine purpose. And so over the next uh, 90 days, you're going to be getting emails from me during the week. Um, I'm going to be doing Facebook Lives every week to connect with you. I have something exciting I'm going to be launching in a couple of weeks. I'll share that with you guys uh, soon. But for today, I want to hop right on in and hey, Terrence, how are you? For today, I really want to hop into this topic. And this topic today is all about actively waiting. And let me tell you why this is really important. So many of you know, I do, I, uh, do silent retreats once a month. And so today I was on my silent retreat and I saw one of the members of the Flow Tribe at the retreat, Jennifer. Oh my God, she is so, her energy is so infectious. Anyway, I just love her. But we were talking about our goals and moving forward and she was just really talking about her challenges with like she's a go-getter she's an executor but yet she feels like she's in a season where god is telling her to hold off and to wait and she's not quite sure what to do with that and so as we um as we kind of chatted up a bit i was telling her that i was doing a live tonight i had another topic i was going to talk about we'll do that one next week y'all but she said you know i would really love for you to share more about this and i don't think it's just her i think we've all been in this place and what is that place? That place is we get to the end of the year. It's all about getting our goals done. It's all about getting it and, you know, and hustling and making that thing happen. And I'm all about that. I'm all about progress and moving forward. But what about, you know, those of us who are not in a season where you see active execution? And what do I mean when I say active execution? What if I'm not one of those people where God is saying, I want you to launch something externally that people can see? What if the active execution he has with for you is internal, something that nobody really sees? Do you feel like you still have goals? Do you still feel like you're getting it and making 2019 the best and all of the stuff that we say? Do you still feel like you're finishing strong if you're not doing, right? Actively doing something that can show people that you've accomplished something. And so what I want people to understand is two things. And this is what I'm about when it comes to flowing in your, your purpose. It's not just about launching something, whether it's a business, a product, or you know something on your job. It's not just about an external experience or an external something that you're doing that people can see. But you set goals, you should be setting goals internally as well. And even if nobody sees those goals, it doesn't mean you don't have them and it doesn't mean you're not executing on them. And so I encourage Jennifer with this today. And so I wanted to bring it to you because I think um, it's really important for people to feel empowered that even if you don't have a tangible product or a tangible thing that people can see, it does not mean you're not moving forward and making progress. However, you have to be careful that you're not just lying dormant and being slothful and not doing anything, right? That you are actively waiting. So tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about actively waiting. 
And y'all know I'm about the Bible. I love my biblical strategies and, and, and I love the word of God. I love Jesus. Y'all know about that. So I'm going to use the Bible to unpack what it means to actively wait and give you a couple of strategies that you can use in the next 90 days to really actively wait on God, even if it's not your time to do something or to launch something. Maybe God has you in a holding, holding pattern for a reason. So let's talk about this. I'm going to give you an overview of Acts chapter one. And so here's the story. So uh, for those who are in the Christian faith, this might make a lot of sense to you. Those who aren't, just follow me and hopefully this is helpful to you. So here's the deal. Christ was crucified. He died on the cross. He was killed. And now he has resurrected, right? And during this resurrection period, over a period of 40 days, he's walking about, connecting with people, and pretty much, you know, just validating that he is the risen king, that he is a savior, all right? During this time, he is connecting with his disciples, those disciples that he walked with and did ministry with and groomed and developed over this period of time. And so what he says to them in Acts chapter one and verse four is, uh, basically, I'll just read it to you. Um, what he says to them is, uh, do not leave Jerusalem until the father sends you what he promised. Remember, I have told you this before, John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so basically he's saying, listen, I want you guys to sit tight and wait. I want you to wait. Hear me. I want you to wait. In a few days, I'm going to give you the gift that I promised you. This gift is the Holy Spirit, Christ within us, so that, and this is why, why you know, he gives it to them. It says in chapter 8, I mean in verse 8, so that you can be my witnesses to, to Samaria, to Judea, to uh, Jerusalem, and to the ends of the earth. So in other words, I need you to wait because I have to empower you so that you can go do what I asked you to do. Now, why is that important? Because he is actually telling the apostles, I need you to take some time not to go out and do anything. Although I'm giving you the assignment and I'm going to give you the empowerment to witness, to be my witness in all of these places, first you got to wait. You have to wait for the divine empowerment to happen before you can go and do it. Now, here's what I think is really important. If you look at this text, right? You see, I think this is really just, to me, it's just fascinating. If you look at this text, what you see is Christ says to them that you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so when I study this, I ask myself, why didn't he just say, you'll be my witnesses to the end of the earth? He could have just said that. But he named Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And a couple of things I want to note here is that Jerusalem was a place that the disciples knew really, really well. Christ did a lot of his ministry work there, but it was also a place of pain for them because they watched their friend, their savior, their Lord be crucified and killed brutally by the people in Jerusalem, by Jews in Jerusalem. And so, you know, he then begins to say, listen, I want you to wait here because even though all this has happened, I want to empower you to witness to these people my love, right? And I want you to witness my salvation to them. Samaria, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along, particularly in the biblical days. And so, you know, you see another group of people that where he's saying, I'm going to empower you to do what seems impossible. In other words, I'm going to empower you with my spirit to do things that you don't want to do, that you really would not, you know, you'd rather be like, no, God, I'm good on that. No, thank you. But I'm going to empower you to do it. But I need you to wait first. I need you to wait. So if you go on in this chapter, what happens is Christ tells him this. He ascends to heaven. They go back to this upper room in Jerusalem and they wait. And here's what the Bible says they did when they were waiting. In verse uh, 14, chapter one, verse 14, it says they all met together continually praying along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women and the brothers of Jesus. And during this time, it was about 120 believers present. And then Peter gets up and he begins to preach out of the scripture. Now, here's here's a pen. Here's what I want you to, want you to hear. They didn't just go back in, the, in Jerusalem or in the upper room and just sit there and be like, oh, my God, when is this going to happen? Oh, my God, it's taking so long. Oh, my God, I thought, it, you know, my time was now waiting for my job. What about my breakthrough or whatever it is? What they did was they went back and they began to pray. They began to communicate with God so that they could understand what was next for them. They were not just sitting there with their twiddling their thumbs, waiting for somebody to give them something outside of the spirit, obviously, but waiting for someone to make them feel better, having a pity party. They waited actively. And what they did, there were two things here that I want you to pay attention to. One is they prayed continually. They prayed continually. While you were in your actively waiting season, you should be praying continually for a couple of reasons. One, it gives you insight and wisdom into what God is wanting for you. Two, it is strengthening you. Three, it is teaching you the character of God. 
right? And so these are things that are important when it's time for you to move and launch into your next. All right, so prayer, communicating with God to know more of who he is and his character so that you can discover more of who you are is really important. So you pray continually and they met with other people. They continue to engage in community. You should not be doing this alone while you are waiting. Think about it at the doctor's office. Well, maybe for some of y'all, y'all don't do this, but I talk to people in the waiting room because I'm just like that. But you know, you're, you're, you don't have to just sit there and flip through a magazine. You can actually have conversation, right? So you are in community with people, particularly if you're a believer in the body of Christ. So be in community. Maybe you need to get a coach and that coach can help you think through in your waiting season, what, you know, understanding what God may be speaking to you or helping you understand some areas in your life that you need to grow or prepare. Right. So while you're actively waiting, stay in community. And here's the third thing I want you to see is that Peter, while he was actively waiting for the spirit to come to empower them to go and do something, what he did was the last thing God told him. All right. So the last thing outside of waiting was Peter began to read the scripture and said, the scripture said that we have to pick another apostle because Judas is no longer with us. Right. So now we got to pick another apostle. And so he went to the scripture and he said, here's what God said we need to do. And they did it. So they did their process. They prayed before they made the decision and then they picked another apostle. So here's what you see. The last thing that God they knew to do that the scripture told them to do is what they did. So I'm going to ask you a question. What is the last thing God asked you to do? And have you done it? So you can't be waiting for the next you know, assignment if you haven't completed the last one, because the way God works, he works in plans. It's in tandem. It's not just kind of these sporadic movements. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's building our lives and developing our lives. And so that last movement is, in, is inter, integral and critical to your next. And so thank God he loves us enough not to um, push us out there, even though we're not prepared. Right. And so I want you to think about that. Are you continually praying? Are you connecting with people so that you can grow and develop and, and uh, be strengthened in community? And are you in the word of God so that you understand what God is saying to you? And have you obeyed the last thing God told you to do? So when you're actively waiting, there's a whole lot of going on. That's a whole lot of activity. It's just internal. So don't ever feel like just because you're not doing something and you're not, you know, out, out here, you know, doing whatever everybody else is doing, building a business, getting a new job, buying a house, whatever those things are, that you're not pursuing and fulfilling goals that God has for your life. And let me tell you something. Here's what I realized. When God told them to actively wait, right, he told them, I want you to wait in Jerusalem because I'm going to empower you. He had given them an assignment to minister to people who were going to be hostile to them. Part of the active waiting, the part of the waiting process that God has you in is to build you up so that you can sustain the success that he's giving you. You can't sustain success if you are not first internally fortified and you don't get fortified in your own strength. You get fortified in the strength of Christ and the strength of God. It is not by your, your power or your might that you can do anything. And so what he was telling them is, I need you guys to wait because you're not going to be able to do the amazing miracles that's going to happen throughout you know, the history of the church if you're not empowered by me. And so you, we need that power. The way that we get that power is to be in communion with God, to be connecting with him through his word, connecting with him through prayer, through community, through conversation, and every day being filled so that we can go out into the world and do the work that he's called us to do. And so I really want to encourage you to take the time to wait. And that, and I was telling Jennifer this today, that is as much activity um, and pursuit of goals as anything else. You may not be in your waiting season and you're launching something, but if, any, if, if I'm telling you what I know, what you see me execute was because it took hours and years and months and days and weeks behind the scenes, getting myself in a position to launch so that it could be sustained. God has no, no, no um, desire to see us go out like a, go up like a firecracker and then fizz, firecracker. I can talk y'all firecracker and then fizzle out. It doesn't benefit him in, in any way. It doesn't even benefit you. And so what God wants from, from us isn't just success. It is a sustained success. It is fruit that remains. And the fruit that remains comes from an internal work that God does by his spirit so that we can have an external, people can have an external experience. 
And, I, and I'll, I'll say this to you before I give you three things to do to, to kind of implement this. By the time you see the miracle that has happened, even in Jesus' uh, days and the stuff that he did, by the time you saw the miracle, it was just a manifestation of what happened in private. What you saw was because Christ was away with his father. And I always say, if Jesus had to pray, then you know we got to pray too, y'all, right? So it was the private work, the internal work, the soul work, right? The work behind the scenes that you were able to see the miracles of God. So it is really vitally important to understand that if your goals for the next 90 day are internal goals, I'm telling you, kudos to you. They are as much um, a real goal and an important goal, if not more important, right? Because then you're fortifying and getting short up so that you can actually do and have sustained success. But those are goals. And I want you to hold fast to those goals so that as you move into the next season of your life, and for some of you, the next season is not going to be January 1st, 2020. It might be June of 2020. Seasons don't, in, in, the, in the faith, seasons don't happen by calendar years. They happen by the will of God. And so for some of us, it may be, but we're in a season, in a season where God is, you know, we're in the last a season of the year, a season where of harvest, a season where things are changing, and it's time for us to reassess where we are. All right? So I really want you to be intentional about spending time with making sure you're getting fortified, that internal fortitude you need to have sustained success over the next 90 days of this year. So here are three things that I want you to do, three things that you can do to get yourself in position, to get clear, and to actively wait. The first thing is, don't look back. Don't, I say this, don't linger in the past because sometimes we have to look back to help us move forward, right? Don't linger in the past. In this passage, after Christ told the disciples that, hey, I want you guys to, um, you know, uh, to wait for the Holy Spirit. I want you to do all this stuff. He then goes to uh, heaven and the, the apostles were standing there waiting. And these angels came, these men came to him and said like, yo, why are you just standing here? Like he's going to come back. In other words, move forward. So I'm telling you, move forward. The first thing is why you're actively waiting is don't think about what you could have done, should have done. We don't do coulda, woulda, shoulda. It just doesn't, it's no benefit to that. What can you do now? What can you do in this season while you're waiting for that next instruction to move? What can you do, right? So discover what it is. Don't linger in the past. The second thing is commit to pray and pray intentionally and pray specifically, right? Be intentional about asking God who he is and learning his character so you can then discover who you are. You don't learn yourself unless you learn God. When you learn the creator, who, who the creator is, you then discover more of who you are. So commit to pray and commit to be in community and connecting with people. And the third thing I want you to do is do the last thing God told you. Just do the last thing. Go back, reflect, go to your journals, do what you have to do. Y'all, I had to do this today myself when I was at my silent retreat. God had to check me and was like, yo, you're not ready to go to the next because you didn't do the last thing I told you three months ago. <laughs> For real, though. So I had to go back and I had to like step back and be like, oh, let me go ahead and handle that. So while I'm waiting to launch the next thing, I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the last thing he told me to do. And so I want you guys to think about that. I want you to process that. And I want you to move, move in the strength of the Lord. And if movement for you is actually launching something external, by all means, handle that. Do it. But if it's for you to think about your internal work, your soul work, by all means, do that, because that's going to really help you see the success and the results that you want in life. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. And so I want to encourage you to go to monicaspake.com and join the Flow Tribe, because I'm going to be doing five minutes of flow with my tribe every week and just giving some tips and strategies that's going to help you move forward and stay grounded so that you can actually see the results that God has for you in this lifetime. <clears throat> um, the other thing is I want you to stay tuned. I have an exciting announcement about working with some people a lot more deep. Um, and so I am, I'm super excited about that. So I'll probably announce that next week on my Facebook Live. And so the third thing is I'll be joining you guys every week. And every Wednesday at 8.15, I'm going to be joining you um, to give you some insight and wisdom and strategies that you can use to help you discover and embrace your freedom to flow. All right. Are there any questions? Oh, my God, Vanita. Oh, my God. I got hey, Vanita. Um, yeah. Any questions, guys, before I hop off? I want to make sure that I'm responding to anything that anybody um, wants to know. So, yeah. Any questions? No questions? All right. So you can always ask questions. I'll come back and check this live feed. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully this, this is helpful. And share this with um, any friends that you think this would be helpful to share with. And if you, know, if you could encourage them in any way, and hey, by all means, check it out. So I'm at my time. And so again, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this uh, flow session. And until next time, as always, stay in your flow. Good night.